we have found ourselves very misfortunately in the middle of what can only be described as an injury crisis. It is not good. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Survival Specialist. If you've been enjoying this save, then drop a like. It's helpful and all that jazz. So I've been straight off the bat. Uh, I've just been handed two terrible pieces of news uh, essentially at the same time, although one of them I've only just noticed. So the day after the transfer window shut, literally February 2nd, Vitor Pereira, groin strain, five weeks out. I brought you in to help us. And what have you done, Vitor? You've hurt yourself for doing some silliness in training, haven't you just? And then even worse news, upon loading his profile to show you this at the start of the video, I've just noticed that he's joining Milan permanently at the end of the season either. Uh, so that means that not only are we going to be missing him for the next five weeks here, but there's no chance of signing him permanently anyway. I, I was just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful start to the day, friends, eh? Some people have toast for breakfast, some people have cereal. Well, we've got shit in a bowl. That's essentially our breakfast today, and we're going to just have to eat it, apparently. In other news, uh, we've had some more bids for Maddie uh, towards the final day of the transfer window. In fact, the, the bids have generally been around four or five point million pounds. Five point million... Four and a half, five point... Five million pounds, roughly, which is, you know, good money, not going to sell him. On the final day of the window, the bids just started chocking up and up and up, mostly because Leon and PSG just started having a bidding war, uh, despite me saying no. It's like two bald men fighting over a comb that I have no intention of giving them. In the end, though, it did get up to 14 million quid for a 17 year old, which is nearly as much as we were having bids for Anoki. So clearly, Maddie's got something about him. Now, hilariously, in between all those bids, like with like an hour or so to go in the transfer window, it's like Leon bid 13 million, PSG bid 13.5. So Swolo just came in in the middle and went, We'll give you 2 million for him. And I'm kind of just like, Thanks for playing, lads, but I think this is a bit above your station. But today, we start off at Groningen. Uh, not super easy, particularly as we've just lost a player to a Groningen. Uh, well, a Groningen strain, so to speak. So to speak. I wish I could, mate. I wish I could. And this is one of these games we have to target to be getting some points from, really. Just the Ajax game, you know, we wouldn't have really budgeted anything other than a defeat there, but it was not ideal to see Roda win as well, particularly as they go away to Camber, who... All right, they're up there, but they just have weird results in them from time to time. And Sparta Rotterdam actually play at home against Heracles, who are dead bottom. So there's a chance they could win that too. And with Pexwell hosting, I, I don't know, there's a lot of permutations. And we ourselves have got some slight problems, of course, because both Ibrahim and per I might have to do a selection advice, honestly. It's not what I want to do, but we may not have an option in this one. Uh, surely. Oh, God, he's not even back yet. Boshar isn't back either. So we could be looking at a totally new centre-back pairing of Gay and Belashev. Belashev? Belayev. But it's not what I want. Uh, and also, surely Florian Grant is available, right? Unfortunately, he is now leaving at the end of the season as well. Uh, sad times. Wouldn't sign a new contract, has joined uh, FCSB. So, not ideal. But I do still fancy a bit of Dela uh, through the middle again. Now, we didn't play well against Ajax, but I still have the hopes that he can do. And Noki, I'm still not fully confident. Do you know what? Right, I'll give him his chance here. Here's your chance. You're going to play in your preferred role through the middle. I want to see a performance out of you today, bud. If not, then hey, I'm going back to my man Timmy. He's got two M's in his name. Because one is just not enough. Without that, it wouldn't be pronounced Tim. His is actually pronounced Tim. And yes, I've had coffee. I'm doing a wonderful job of hiding it. So I think that's going to be our lineup for today. Away from home, we, we have to do better than we... I, I say have to do better. Seven points from our first five, four league games is pretty good. And if we can make that 10 from five, I'd be ecstatic. But even a point would be a good point for me. This team kind of feels like it's got all the constituent parts to be like an absolute, like, like the F1 car, really. It is, it's sleek and aerodynamic and efficient right now. Um, not at the moment, anyway. But it kind of just feels like our predecessors had used the exact same component parts to make a horse and cart somehow. Not entirely sure how, but I guess they read the instructions wrong. Maybe they were in the wrong language. I don't know. These are the types of games that we need to be targeting. I'll be very interested to see how we actually perform here because we picked up some great results at home. And obviously the great one against Feyenoord as well. And we've looked good in virtually every game. But it's games like this that really matter. These sort of bread and butter games away at sort of teams that are definitely better than us. But on our day, we're capable of beating. And hoping that our teams around us don't start taking more points. Particularly with Rhoda on a bit of an upcharge. As we play them next in the cup. Maybe a chance to potentially put them back in the bin for a bit. Willems! Good little flick on header. And off to a flying start. We really do get off the off the mark quickly. And Noki can bring this away. And he's found Monier. Is there going to be an option, a bit of space for him today? Goes past one. He's got to get the shot away here. Killian Monnier gets the shot on target. That's good. Blotcher. Round the side for Jitski. What a tackle. And it's a good save in the end from Aga. That is a brilliant tackle. I don't know who that was. It might have been Belayev. 
They like to play it out from the back. It was, it was a nice ball again for Leal. And the defenders need to start closing him down a little bit. And again, Sammy Agger caught into action. In the first five minutes, he's already made more saves than he's made in some of the full matches we've played. Really proving his worth before he buggers off to Celtic at the end of the year. Oh, and another big save from Agger. Okay, well, Groningen have come to play. And it... Oh... Well, they, no, they really have come to play. Uh, we just kept letting them win headers, and eventually Aga was just like, come on, lads, I'm not a one-man team. And apparently, well, okay, this is interesting. The result against Ajax, has it dented our confidence a little bit right now? Because we've come out here and been quite poor. Like, they should be doing better with that one. Aga's unsighted. Is there a hint of offside there? I don't know, but it doesn't matter because he couldn't keep that one out. Willems on the right-hand side. It's a poor first touch from Leicester Willems. Really poor. Are we just having a bad day? Dolk. There's players left and right, and... Well, wow, Zitsky's in again, and it's now two. Eight minutes into the game, and it's 2-0 to Groningen. Uh, Andre Zitsky makes it 2-0, and there's nothing again that Aga could do about that. And once more, uh, that one came from Leicester Willems losing the ball on our own counter-attack. Still, we had a lot more things to do after that. I think we need to get someone marking Dolk, because he's finding a little bit too much space. It's a great ball through from him. The defenders lose him. It's a great first-time finish, and this is a problem. It is certainly not all sunshine and rainbows all of a sudden. I expected a lot better from us in this game. But to be two got old, Van Dwin, big tackle on him as well. A knocky and Florian Grant. Well, I mean, who else was it going to be? 17 minutes on the clock. Groningen two, Den Haag one, and Florian Grant is there again. He'd had, he had one goal before we joined the club, and now he's got five, no, six goals for us so far. Really, really good stuff. Um, we got that goal back exactly when we needed it. Nice work from Anoki here, uh, just to drop this one back. Uh, Rochevel's ball through, good little tackle, but lovely little pick up from Anoki to pick that one out for Florian Grant, and he's done it again. 2-1. Okay, game on. I'm hoping if we can reduce his uh, influence on the match, it can make a big difference. Just stopping him from controlling that central midfield and playing those passes around could be key. Willems now. Allow us to take a bit more control. Win the ball back at some key Willems is driving into the box. Can he win a penalty or something? Ball across and a knock. He's on the end of it. And somehow the defender is able to shepherd it into the goalkeeper's chest. Uh, into the channel for Florian Grant again. Can he finish? Oh, what a save. Wow, what a first half. It's a big tackle on Parafestas, but it's fallen to Leal. Hopefully we can force the long-range strike. They do not seem like they're up for those long-range hits, unfortunately. Oh, this is through. And a good save again from Aga. Things elsewhere are going poorly for us. As things stand, we would fall five points from safety with results elsewhere. Aga clips one long and it's an aimless clearance from Aga. This could cost us as Parafestas is in behind again and it's just wide of the post. Well, half time, it's been a very, very even game. They burst out the traps, but you can definitely see that we've improved since we made that slight switch and definitely limited them. But we have to score more. Like, if we're just able to pull this game back to get a two-all draw or something here, I'd consider that a very good result, even though there could still be negative things elsewhere as Monier, he has to score. Monier on the rebound, and it is two, wow. Literally, within 10 seconds of the kickoff, we've got the leveler. I don't know how that's happened. Honestly, it could have been even quicker if he didn't have to put in the rebound. What on earth were they doing? Who was that that put the ball through? Servetson just looks up and goes, you know what? Let's try something here. So much space. Monier tries to poke it first time. Bay makes the stop, but Monier on the rebound. 13 seconds from the the start of the second half and we're level it could have been less than 10 that is a huge comeback from the lads after completely shitting the bed in the opening moments of this match to pull it back so fast parafestas and <laughs> oh no what have i said there carlos leal makes it 3-2 to groningen it's the first time they've really got through us since scoring their second goal and we've just let our concentration levels drop a bit since finding the equalizer directly from a free kick here he just makes a great run into the channel here, Parafestas. They don't track him at all. And Van Duyn's got no hope of getting back to this. They don't track the run of Leal, and it's an easy finish for him. And now we've got it all to do again. The semi-good news is that Feyenoord have equalised in their game. Oh, now Paxwell are back in front again. Never mind. From Mihaville Strock, of all people. I'm, I recognise that name. I'm almost certain he's played for one of my teams in some point during the legacy of this save. I think he may well have been at Dinamo Zagreb. Imagine that, eh? Florian Grand, bit of space now. Come on. Just bail us out to a three-all or something. Keep us in the fight. Or oh, win a penalty or something, Florian. Ball in. Vidmar over the crossbar. And Monier has picked this up, you know. Bit of space to maybe run through the middle. No, hopefully hold the ball up a bit. Or he can take his man on. He's in the box. That's surely a foul. And it is. It's going to hopefully be a penalty to Den Haag. That looked a bit soft as well, potentially. But I think this one's much more likely to be given. I don't know who takes our pens, though. Awards the penalty. Right, we have a chance for three all. And Monier, the man who... Well, I mean, if anyone deserves one, of course it's him. They've just made three changes? Two changes? Killian Monier for three all here. And to keep us in the relegation survival hunt. And he's hit the post with the penalty. Yeah, as things stand, we would fall five points from automatic safety. Uh, with the results going against us elsewhere. If we could just pull this back to a draw, which we really should have done, let's be honest. Then it could make the world of difference. It would still only be a four-point gap, but still. Monier. Can he go through? Oh, he's going to have to drop this off to Vidmar. Can Vidmar get this ball back to someone he's going to shoot, isn't he? Yep. 
Oh. As Rhoda have scored in the 75th minute against Cambo, making our lives even more difficult down there, I think we'd actually end up slipping further. Those little lapses in concentration could end up costing us dearly here, and I think they are. It's going to be Groningen 3, Den Haag 2. I mean, we had the chances in this game. This wasn't like we just came here and got battered. Like, we had opportunities and should have taken something from this match. Uh, we missed the penalty. We were still probably at least in the game beyond that as well. Like, after such a poor start, we really did start to take control there, but we were just digging ourselves such a, such a deep hole. And given that play for Carlos Leal, that is not a result we needed. Because that's how the league looks now. Five points from automatic safety, with Rodo winning as well. We're actually you now four points from the automatic, for even the safety of the relegation playoff. Things have suddenly taken a real turn here, from considering how well we started. I don't think it's by any means all, you know panic stations by any means i think we've actually still looked pretty good in this game it's just just didn't quite go our way and we missed a penalty in it uh, which does not help even the point would have been something here with sparta rotterdam winning two pex voller beating Feyenoord. yeah we are gonna need to pick it up a little bit here but we do play sparta rotterdam in the off-camera matches but also rz so yeah back in a sec and i think we're playing fortuna sitard up next so that's gonna be huge i'll see you guys in a sec right then friends we are back we have found ourselves very misfortunately in the middle of what can only be described as an injury crisis. It is not good. But after 23 minutes in the cup against Rhoda, we were able to take the lead. Willems with the ball over the top. Monnier doing Monnier things. 1-0 to us after 23 minutes. But Ibrahim out for three months with a torn hamstring. He went off five minutes into this game, losing yet another centre-back. Uh, very, very bad news. But then, 42 minutes onto the clock, Vidmar made it 2-0 to Den Haag and surely booked us a place in the cup semi-final, which is good. However, there was a little sting in the tail here, as with 58 minutes on the clock, a ball was put over the top of Vincourt, and a lovely little finish from him made it 2-1, but it wasn't enough. A decent performance from us. In the second half, we completely did nothing. Uh, it was just incredible how bad we were, but we got away with the result in the end. We'll play Feyenoord in the semi. It's a shame because the other semi is, I believe, Cambo versus Sparta Rotterdam, who went away to Ajax and won. They won 1-0 at Ajax. And if we could have drawn one of those two, there would have been a real shot at a cup final here. But we got through. That's the main thing. But losing Ibrahim through injury so early and for such a long time, he's basically done for the season. Terrible news. And he's not the only one. Next up, we had an insanely important game at home against Sparta Rotterdam. Inside a minute, the ball was put across and it was cleared off their striker. And we went 1-0 down inside a minute with essentially an own goal that they scored. Terrible, terrible start to the match for us. 10 minutes on the clock, though. After a good little period of play from us, Willems put the ball through. Vidmar, with a lovely first-time finish, made it 1-1. And the kind of uh, we got a bit more confidence back after that point, and the play started to come. Then, 58 minutes on the clock now. This was a massive moment for it. Della with the ball into Anoki. A lovely little low-driven effort made it 2-1 to Den Haag. And we massively needed this to stop ourselves from panicking. However, just four minutes later, uh, Sparta Rotterdam really had the second attempt attack of the match and the ball was put through and Vletstra was able to make it 2-2. Shocking news for us there, not what we needed at all. But in the 70th minute, Vidmar's header flicks it down for Dela and who would get in behind but who else? Monnier round the side, smashing us 3-2 up. Great result. That wasn't even the biggest thing in this game. I think we were the deserved winners in the end, but it's the fact is we did have a red card, as you can see, for Arona Gabe, which means he's missed a game as well, in the 92nd minute, and I'll take it any day of the week. There's a weird situation where the ball looped over the top of our defence. Nobody was tracking it except for him and the Sparta striker. He pulls the striker down just outside the penalty area. Straight red card for denying a clear goal-scoring opportunity, but in the 92nd minute, it was enough to give us the win because we almost certainly would have conceded off of that play. So he, may well, he took the red for the team there. Absolutely brilliant stuff from him there to get us the result that we needed and then something just bizarre happened it's like all those missed chances we've had as of late bottled out in one game grand around the side lester williams one nil to den Haag away at rz after 20 minutes on the clock and then it got better a knockies ball in Belayev with the header, 2 0 on 35 minutes. And I thought this time we're not going to let this slip. And we didn't. 35 minutes in, Belayev scores a second for himself, 3 0 to Den Haag. But Monnier went off injured in the second half here. Della slipped the ball through for Ragipovic. He goes round the goalkeeper and slots us 4 0 up away at second place, RZ. But they did still have one last little sting in the 90th minute here. I was hoping we could get a clean sheet, but really, I mean, who cares, I suppose, at this point? The ball was put across the box. A simple finish here for Krumov, but 4 1. We've played a lot better in many, many games this season than this. And I think, honestly, just Belief stepping up from the set piece has made a massive difference. But this is an insanely good victory. But the, the downside is, is simple. Monnier, uh, not torn hamstring, but a strained hamstring. And he's going to be out for five weeks. So we're going to be missing our star striker probably for the next five matches, roughly. Although maybe even six with cup games in there too. But still, results like this are incredible.
because from a position of weakness, we now find ourselves in a position of strength. We're only one point outside there, but we are 14th in the Eredivisie now. 25 points from 25 games. Um, getting that result against Sparta was so goddamn important. That just pulled us back into the battle. And I thought, well, you know, we go to our Z, whatever happens, happens. We're still in the fight. Yep, we were in the fight a little bit more, though, by winning 4-1 there, which was absolutely fantastic. We do have those results in us. And I don't know, the Ajax result, we expected to lose that, and we did. Groningen was a strange one, and I was worried. I was hovering over the panic button with the injuries and that. But we've given ourselves a real fighting chance now. And I think if we can just maintain, like, a point a game for the rest of the season, I think we've given ourselves enough of a buffer now. Well, I say a buffer. We've given ourselves enough strength to keep ourselves in this position. And there's winnable games coming up for us, too. I don't know. I, I want to set the target of, like, 36, 37 points. I think that will keep us out of any kind of trouble. Still, that's going to require another four wins. But this team, I definitely feel, have got that in them. I think we've already got four wins so far. I'm ecstatic with the guys at the moment. However, I do worry that without Monier through the middle, we are definitely going to be weaker. We're weaker at the back as well. So I think there is going to be more games like the Groningen one, but we've given ourselves a chance. That's all we can really do. And today we take on Fortuna Sittard, who have sort of fallen down the league a little bit now. Now we really do have to focus on the teams around us. Really, it's the teams below us, the th three teams directly below us. We've got another win one here though, and I think we're good enough to do it. But I am curious to see how we play without some of our stars, and you'll see what I mean. It's not an ideal situation. Now, Florian Grand had an injury in that period too and is now going to be back. So it's definitely not the end of the world. But oh, to be honest, yeah, that might be the option. But you can see that our back pairing now of Gay and Rashoival, who's five foot nine, uh, but he's fairly quick. So it kind of just balances out a little bit. It's, it's far from ideal. Pereira is, I say nearly back. He's not really nearly back. Uh, he might be available for a game in a couple, in like a week or two, but it's still far from ideal to be missing Pereira Ibrahim, and actually, not, I don't know why I wouldn't play Believ, actually. Believ scored twice in the last game. My assistant seems to have an issue with him, but that's fine. But Vito Vidmar's done okay when he's come in, and Florian Grand is obviously Florian Grand. So I hope that he can do us a job through the middle, because if it isn't him, you're looking at Ragipovic, who it, it did okay, scored off the bench in the last game, but lacks the match fitness a little bit. I, I don't know. I think Grand is the guy for that role. I'd essentially earmarked this game as the one that we could sort of use to get some, hopefully, get grab a win uh, if things started to take a bit of a downward spiral for us because we didn't actually look brilliant against Sparta Rotterdam. We gave up a lot of chances. Giovanni van Bronckhorst is managing them, by the way. In the back of my mind, I, I kind of swing from one way to the other. At the start of the video, I was thinking to myself, right, genuinely, this team with the right signings could probably challenge for Champions League places uh, over, over a full season. I'd be curious to see what our PPG would balance out like. And then after we had the Ajax defeat, and then the defeat to Groningen as well. I was thinking to myself, oh, maybe not. Maybe there is just an element of fortune to this. But now we seem back in business. Although apparently struggle to even have a highlight in this match at the moment seems to be the situation. Everyone below us is losing though. So there's that. A, a highlight, literally a highlight in the first half of stoppage. First half stoppage time is the first thing we've really seen from this game. Uh, we've certainly not been our creative best at the moment. And I really do worry that oh, I just, I feel like Florian Grand might be a better operator off that right hand side and maybe give Ragipovic a run through the middle. Although, we'll see what happens here. Vidmar, he's gone to the box. Uh, that is pretty poor. Yeah, half time. And I mean, can we both be losing? It feels like we're both losing. He will definitely make more appearances this season. It's just going to be a while because he'll be out for four to five weeks. So that's like a month off. Plus, you've then got to sort of slowly wean them back in to avoid any injuries. So it's definitely not going to be an easy period for us. Is Holler about to go down? Oh, this could be massive. Holler could be gone. 30 seconds into the... I mean, that is not a red card for me. There's barely even a tackle on him. Jarno Holler is gone. Vidmar, blocked. But there's going to be so much more room for Octay out wide. Vidmar! Good save. Do we use up all of our goals against RZ? Because it certainly feels like it. Oh, Vidmar into space now. He's going to have to pull this back for somebody. He's got his... Oh, and another good strike. Vidmar's getting into some good positions, actually. Ball in. Cleared. This is looking like it's going to be a half of pressure from us, but we've got to make it take. Got to make it count. Vidmar again over the bar. He's getting a lot of shots. Octa again. Vidmar's making yet another run and another block shot. And back across again and it's in off the bat and it's Florian Grand. There he is. Through the middle. 1-0 Den Haag. He's done nothing all game but he's got on the end of it when we needed him the most. The pressure since that goal, uh, since the red card, has been absolutely relentless. This right hand side has taken a peppering here. Vidmar in great positions constantly here but the one time they don't pick up Florian Grand he's got in there and made it 1-0. That's big news. Didier, can he get it back through? Vidmar's in behind again. Can he get his goal? No he can't but he's once again made a brilliant run. And win. Didier now for the shot, maybe. And it's saved. And Vidmar on the rebound. He gets his goal. And if anybody's deserved a goal in this second half, it's Vito Vidmar. He was on a 6.4, I think, when that red card happened. And then just the huge amount of spaces that opened up for him in this second period. 
he has been the one man that's really been making those chances for us. Didier shot, I think actually hits the post. Oh no, the goalkeeper saves it off the inside of his knee and Vidmar's there to put in the rebound and deservedly so. I'm glad we stuck with him out there. There we go, intercepted by Didier. Come on, can he put Florian Grand in? Finds Dela. Now it's Florian Grand with the chance and it's hit the post. This looks like a team that just really have no right to be down in the relegation zone anymore. And we're certainly proving that now, even after a little wobble. Uh, they really have recovered their composure. That cup win, I think, made a massive difference. Ball in, and Vidmar on the end of it again, and it's 3-0 now in the second half. And Vito Vidmar is going to be man of the match, I think, at the end of this, and I think he thoroughly deserves it. Uh, the amount of space they've given him has just been unplayable here. Lovely build-up again. A 4-1 away at RZ, and now a 3-0 up against Fortuna Sittard, albeit with a 10-member. Hey, this goal difference is flying back up. Great ball in. Vidmar rises highest, and it's 3-0. Clips it back out for Vidmar again. Surely not a hat trick or something. He's into the box. Can he get a penalty maybe? Oh, he actually has. He actually has won a penalty. Vidmar might get a second half hat trick at this rate. No penalty? I'm sorry. I mean, I know he had a soft one before, but Jesus. I mean, it's going to be Den Haag 3, Fortuna Sittard 0. Um, God, wait till you see this XG graph for the second half of us just dominating them. Also, Herenveen are 6-0 up away at FC Twente. What on earth is going on there? There we go. 3-0. Huge victory. Look at this. <laughs> oh, my God. What a second half performance from the guys. They really did make that man advantage count, didn't they? Good Lord. Vidmar, man of the match, deserved. He should have had a hat trick or at least a chance to. Silly referee. That was a superb result. Uh, we stay 14th, but most importantly, we now move four clear of FC Twente, who are absolutely sinking like a stone. 6-0 defeat at home to Herenveen. What on earth is going on there? Uh, regardless, we are starting to look like a really good team. And I do wonder about how far we could potentially go now that we're starting to look like we've got our shit together all of a sudden. Um, because this is insane. We really are playing fantastically well after that little wobble. I think that's four consecutive, not in the league. I think it's three in the league, though, which is still very, very good. Oh, by the way, I had a little look. Mihivil Strok, who was playing for, I think it was Pexwala, was a guy that we had at uh, Dinamo Zagreb much, much earlier in the save, but he is still knocking about there. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that was, I was like a little bit worried about that, but all of a sudden, we genuinely look like a very strong team. We've scored three goals or more in each of our last three league games. This team has goals in it, and this is without our main striker and without our solid defense. I genuinely think that this team, even as it is right now, uh, obviously make a bad judgment at the end of the season, could challenge for Champions League football. Not this season. There's just simply too much of a deficit. But over a full season, it's nutty how good this team is for the style of football we play. Anyway, next episode, we'll be doing the final game um, off camera, probably in between. And then we'll come back for Roda. And I mean, look at these games in here. I mean, we've lost weird ones before, but still, I'm excited about the rest of the season. So if you've enjoyed that, and I hope you have, drop a like. That'd be tremendous. If you're new to the channel, subscribe too. That'll be fantastic as well. I stream on Twitch Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Fondo as well. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for, well, I say the battle continues, but no, no, we can't get ahead of ourselves. We're not out of this yet, but we are looking in bloody good shape to do exactly that. So I'll see you guys soon. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.